When should we use a bottom up versus a top down selling motion? And what are we trading off in each? In reality, we're talking about two different types of companies. Let's talk about the attributes that you would look for in each. A classic top down selling motion company where it's the exclusive motion and there's no other one around in it is either a hard to use product where it's complicated or sophisticated or it's hard to use, or there's high customization requirements by the customers, you know, data or dashboards or something very specific about their business. And in those cases, you're prioritizing a top down selling motion because that's what the customer needs require or your product, but specifically the customer needs. And if the customer requires it, you're going to go and prioritize that motion. Now on the flip side, bottom up works really well when you have a really easy to use product. And we know those types, the Slacks, the Herokus, the GitHubs of the world, those are classic bottom up selling motion companies because the products are so easy easy to use that customers can just sign up for them and use them from day one. They never have to talk to the company. What happens typically is people want to pick one. We're a bottom up company or we're a top down company. And I believe that to be a false dichotomy. You don't need to pick. All great companies will eventually have a top down selling motion. If you start as a bottom up company and you want to become a great company, you will eventually have a top down selling motion. Hard stop. Let's not discuss this anymore. Second, if you start as a top down selling company and you want to layer on bottom up in the future and you say, hey, we want to also add this motion, you got to be honest with yourselves. If your customers are never going to be able to go do that, that's one. Two, if your product sucks and it's hard to use, you're never going to get traction. No matter what you do, you're not going to get people to use that on a regular basis. So two things I would encourage people to think about here. One is where do we start? Which one of these is more appropriate for our customer segment? And then two, does our product currently support it? Some advice. If your product is hard to use and your customers require a top-down selling motion because of customization, you can still find quote unquote, bottom up value creation really quickly. And the goal is, is to get them to understand your product in under some time frame, five minutes or 30 minutes with a minor bit of customization or interaction. And that will feel bottom up motion there without all of the work that has to go into it. You recently said that the head of data should report to the CTO. That doesn't really track with my experience. Can you explain more? It's a very specific answer that I'm giving. One is data typically grows out of engineering. So by default, I would want it to start reporting to the CTO. It's growing out of engineering. It's organizing itself around the engineers. It's starting that way. Keep it for that way for as long as possible. It's the same principle I espouse to almost all other organizations, which is do not make a specific organization until it's well past time to do that. Don't do it too early. Do it when it's needed, just in time. The second is when the options are CTO, CEO, CFO, I think the CTO is the most appropriate. It's the one where the organization has the most support. It's the one where the organization probably feels closest aligned, even if it doesn't always feel aligned to the people around it. And then I also think that that is a case where other organizations start to build their own expertise, but none of them are going to run their own models. None of them are going to build their own data pipelines. That's not going to happen. So someone still has to go do that work. That's the data organization that is more appropriately inside the engineering organization reporting to the CTO. The one exception where I typically say don't do this is when you have a strong enough data leader and you're going to make a chief data officer or some equivalent title like that and have that person report to the CEO. That that is the case when I typically say, hey, absolutely pull this out. Make sure that that is a top level primitive to the company because it is so important. But you got to always with all other executives find the right leader for that. Can you explain your organizational flotilla analogy in more depth? For those that don't know, I've said this a couple of different times, but what I want people to think about when they're building organizations, I recommend people think that organizations are not monolithic structures. It's rather simple to me that a cruise ship essentially is just this large monolithic thing. One ship, one body of people going in one direction at one speed to one destination. It's comfortable to think that way. A company looks that way. But I do think of it instead as a flotilla, which is effectively an armada of ships. They have one mission with one ultimate captain who's barking out overall orders, but each one of the ships is a specialty. And it understands what it's supposed to do in the context of the overall mission. Once you understand that's how flotillas work, you actually see that that is closer to what companies in an ideal state look like. It just feels more comfortable to start thinking about them as cruise ships, which I think is ultimately the wrong way to do it.